will join us soon. Kindly bear with us. Dear audience, the speaker will join us soon. Kindly bear with us.
it's working now. Yes. Yes, I have, I've got it now. Uh, no, it's okay. Let me start and uh, after a while I'll start the share screen. Thank you so much. And we have 130 participants in this. Please. Sure. Distinguished guest, Dr. Harish Chaudhary. Ladies, gentlemen, and dear friends, a very good evening to one and all. Avenue 2020 is here. I am Lisa Pinto of Class 11D, Indian School Muscat, your host for this evening. It is with great pleasure that I welcome you to Avenue 2020, a virtual career guidance program hosted by Indian School Muscat under the auspices of the Board of Directors, Indian Schools in Oman. On behalf of Indian School Muscat, I extend a warm welcome to our esteemed guest speaker of today's program, Professor Dr. Harish Chaudhary from IIT Delhi University, who is here to inspire and make a difference with his talk on VISTAs in Management Studies. A short video about Dr. Harish for the audience. Indian School Muscat welcomes Dr. Harish Chaudhary, Professor of Management Studies at the Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi, and a passionate advocate of excellence in school education. His passion took the form of a workshop on value education and has now grown into a national movement. He has taught students from across the world, from Australia to the USA, and has been honored with a Global Faculty Award by IBM. His quest for excellence in school education has seen him hold over 20 training programs for school leaders and author a book on the subject. He is most certainly a great teacher with a great power to mold. We have with us today a rare blend of a teacher and a facilitator. Indian School Muscat proudly welcomes Dr. Hari Chaudhary. Thank you so much. Uh, am I audible to you? Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay. Uh, if you don't mind, what's your name? Sir, my name is Lisa. Thank you so much, Lisa, for a wonderful introduction. Welcome, sir. It's my pleasure to be talking to the kids, the parents. So we are privileged to have you here amongst us at this Avenir 2020. May I request Professor Dr. Harish Chaudhary to enlighten us with his words of wisdom. Sir, may I interrupt? Sir, may I interrupt? Your audio, your mic is muted, sir. I'm so sorry. No, it's all right, sir. Um, is it okay now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you so much, Lisa. That was wonderful. If I may say a flowing introduction. Thank you, sir. I had visited Oman and conducted a program for the school teachers and principals a few years back. Fortunately, unfortunately, these times we are not able to see each other so clearly. But it's a pleasure to be here. I'm happy to be here. I'm excited to be here. Besides what Lisa has said, let me introduce myself a little further. 
I am 60 years of age, as my gray hair suggests. Uh, and it's a little flowing because I haven't had a haircut due to COVID for some time. In the good old days, for the children who are here, I would say good old days before you were born. I did my schooling at a school in uh, India, in Dehradun, called the Dune School. Probably it has continued to be ranked number one residential school for the last 50 years, for reasons not very clear to me. At that point of time, it was very important for me coming from middle class family to do a higher education course, which would take me to a job. It was very important for me to get a job. I came from a very middle class family. My parents had no business uh, set up. I needed to be in a job. And so I joined IIT Kanpur and did chemical engineering. My first job was with a company, was with a company called Dunlop making tires, which was a British company at that point of time. And we found that there were people, there were boys, I was 21 years of age at that point of time. And there were these uh, smart kids, if I may say, who were getting twice our salary. So I asked my managing director, sir, uh, why are they paid more? And they said, because they are, uh, they have done an MBA, they are management grads. So out of 13 of us, nine of us immediately left the company at the end of two years and did our management course. I went to a place called IIM Bangalore, Indian Institute of Management Bangalore, and joined a company called Hindustan Lever, now called Hindustan Unilever. Cutting a long story short, because time is short and we are 22 minutes already into the session. Something fascinated me about teaching and I shifted to a teaching career four years down the line. And I've enjoyed every bit of it. And theoretically I should be at a retirement age now, but my institute insists that I continue to teach for another few years. Now so much for my introduction. Let me get on with the subject because uh, I believe uh, the purpose of this session is to give you some information which would help some of you to make up your mind and decision as to what is it you want to do in life. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen for a while. And let me see how it works. Uh, Uh, Lisa, can you tell me whether it's visible as a slide? Management no, sir. Record? No, sir. No. 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 Did um, you click on share screen, sir? Yes, I did. Uh, and, so, did any window pop up, sir? No. There are no windows popping up when I say share screen. It's giving me a blank screen. Basic uh, you... advanced files. Yes, yes, yes. So can you see your presentation in uh, one of the windows, sir? There are... No, I, okay. I, I can't. Because Inside, it is not... under basic, if you click on basic. No, I'm not seeing it. You said uh, basic, you are able to see basic advanced and... Yes, but when I click on basic, um, it doesn't allow me anything. Inside uh, the window, you will be able to see your presentation, yeah, sir. Can you see the thumbnail of your presentation? No, I can't. I can't. When I click on basic, it doesn't tell me anything. It doesn't move from there. It is saying basic advanced files. In advanced, it is saying something. In files, it is saying something. Um, uh, uh, could you stop sharing the screen and uh, could you open yeah. the presentation first, sir? Okay. But that's on my desktop. Yes, sir. First, open the presentation, sir. Yeah. Okay. I've opened it. Uh, now you uh, click on share screen, sir. 
go back to the zoom window okay yes now it is showing yeah yes sir so is there any audio in it sir no there's audio no audio video video no it's just a powerpoint presentation just slides so okay sir thank you thank you so sir is that visible now yes sir yes sir okay uh, my apologies uh, i think my age allows me to be technology challenged although i did my first computer course uh, in 1978 with professor vv rajaraman who is considered the father of computing in india notwithstanding so i'm going to talk about management as a career so on the assumption that some of you can read the screen the formal definition of management is planning organizing staffing monitoring controlling please note it does not say manufacturing it does not say selling a business typically begins from an idea see management is about business organizations and we also believe in the management world that everything is a business government is a business films is a business politics is a business and of course there's corporate business so the theoretical definition of management suggests planning organizing staffing monitoring controlling it is applicable to manufacturing it is applicable to selling and there's something in between another definition of management suggests optimization utilization of resources optimal utilization means best utilization simplifying that and this is not a book definition the first two are book definitions and those of you who get into the management discipline will probably start with your book by kuntz and kahan introduction to management and these are definitions there but to simplify it it just is doing things better anything can be done a little better and little better and little better and what does better mean what does the word better mean it is not the best it is not good it is better it means two things productivity and effectiveness so what is productivity producing more with less can i get more output from the same input or can i get the same output from lesser input now that is the challenge of management and the second is effectiveness am i able to get that impact a little better in a shorter span of time with lesser resource so simply put that is management my apologies uh, so management begins with the self how well do you manage yourself self management what does self management mean time how well do you manage your time now very interestingly god has given exactly 24 hours to each and every person on the face of this earth and he has probably given us the same life span a very similar life span maybe a working life span of the age of 22 to maybe 62 30 40 years to each and every one of us <clears throat> some people are able to achieve much more than others so how well do you manage your time it is not that you can have more time it is not that people who do great things have more time than the others no everybody has the same time how well do you manage your stress everybody gets tired physically mentally socially emotionally can you continue to perform better under stress how well do you manage your health can you always be what we call fighting fit and perhaps most important how well do you manage your relationships your friends your parents your colleagues your classmates 
This is the challenge of management. Management is a science and an art. You know, fortunately, unfortunately, at some point of time in your school, you were asked to choose between science and art. Life is neither science nor art. It is both. So management is a combination. You can do things better with technology, a better technology, a better way of doing things. But there's an issue of management of technology. How well are you able to use the technology? So whereas technology usually, most of the time, and if I may say a word on technology, technology is the application of science. Most science, at least physics and chemistry, usually deal with innate material. They deal with objects. They deal with metals, non-metals, solutions. But even that has to be managed. But the basic difference between technology and management is that management includes within it obtaining the willing cooperation of people. You can get work done from people by force. We call that administration. But when people willingly do the job that they're supposed to do, that is the challenge of management. Most of the time, most people are unhappy about the work they have to do. They don't enjoy it. How great would life be if everybody enjoyed what they were supposed to do? Like students don't like to attend classes. What is it the teacher can do to make the classroom enjoyable so that children love to come to it? That's the challenge of management. So management then applies to all activities in life. From the smallest to the largest. From running a tea shop, from managing a home, from managing the kitchen. You know, sometimes I believe that the best manager is the mother. She manages so many things at home. To managing governments, managing the Sultanate of Oman, managing the United States of America. It applies to all businesses. And I once again repeat, in the world of management, we believe that everything is a business. Education is a business. Government is a business. Running a school, managing a school is a business. It need not be for profit. It applies to all people. It's all pervading. There is nobody who is outside the area of management. And at a micro level, it applies to self. It applies to you, it applies to me. So the rules of management are the same for everyone. Now, what are the disciplines of management? Now, within management, just as in science, you have physics, chemistry, biology, we have certain disciplines. Production. Converting inputs to outputs through a production process. So, again, there are different names that you will come across for production. Uh, just give me a minute. I'll, I'll just be back with you in a minute. Sorry, uh, there was a small thing I need to attend to. Uh, Lisa, am I audible now? 
Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay. So production, converting inputs to outputs. You see, the whole economy, the global economy, is working on value addition. all businesses work on value addition so simplistically put production is converting inputs to outputs making a cup of tea is a production process i started my career with a company called dunlop we used to make tires and rubber mattresses so you have rubber you have carbon black you have steel you have nylon and you do something with that to make a tire so manufacturing at a local level converting raw materials to finished goods so all of you everybody has seen your mother converting vegetables raw vegetables into food cereals into food now that's production it can be small it can be large it can be huge it can be humongous when you look at theory you will find different words for it operations so we have a whole area called operations management which fundamentally is very similar to what we call production you have supply chain supply from the raw material to the finished goods and you have logistics transportation conversion so these are all part of production process converting raw materials to finished goods is production converting them efficiently and effectively is productivity but it's a discipline and you could be required to specialize in that if you love it no business moves without money to me money funds is the life blood of any business please note it is not the end result <coughs> and within finance you would have three broad areas accounts how to keep track of accounts and believe me it's a challenge costing and audit and within audit you will have statutory audit you will have forensic audit so there's a whole area in that and it's a lovely area to be in finance and then you have marketing no business can survive without sales at the end of the day the purpose of all business is to sell sell effectively sell efficiently but within that we have an area called branding brand management so there are big brands ibm apple coca cola pepsi global brands it's a whole area within marketing how do you make these brands what is it that makes these brands what is it that makes this brand so strong so these are the three core areas if i may say of management production finance and marketing it cannot happen without people how do you get people to put in their best how do you challenge people to perform how do you keep them happy after they put in a lot of work and effort how do you get the talent to flourish so human resources and within human resources an area of behavior management individual behavior organizational behavior why do people behave the way they behave again a brilliant area to be in and now all of it all these above activities through information and information technology so at the moment we are talking about management but we are actually using the information technology we are probably talking to each other through the computer media i am here sitting in delhi 
talking to you in various parts of the globe how can these areas become more efficient with the use of information technology so these are the broad five areas within management i'll come to why i'm saying it and why do we need to be bother about it now what are the careers what is it where is it that you could be after let's say an education in management one you could work with the government any government government of india government of oman sultanate of oman government of america government of france any government the government needs managers some governments don't call them managers they call them administrators but fundamentally it's a management job then there is the corporate sector the multinational companies the oil and gas companies of the sultanate and of course within the corporate sector there are these areas which i talked to you about manufacturing production you could be in a factory making computers or making cars or making soft drinks or making soaps it doesn't matter you could be in manufacturing the banks and financial institutions they need managers you could be in consultancy organizations if some of you have heard of the mckinsey and the boston consulting group the anderson kpmg you could be working with advertising agencies thomas walter ulka i'm talking of global agencies mckinsey huge advertising agencies you could be working in the marketing pure marketing companies who manufacture nothing so if somebody is about airbnb or ola or uber they don't own anything they only market <coughs> you could be working in films in hollywood in bollywood they need managers you could be in the sports area so i don't know how many of you are interested in football soccer or cricket the managers earn more money than the sportsmen there is very little and very difficult to earn money as a sports person unless you really really make it to the global level but management firms so one of the most profitable organization called called IMG international management group which is managing sports people you could be working in hr human resources recruiting people training people developing people third you could be working in the social sector unesco united nations education scientific cultural organization you could be working with the world bank you could be working with non government organizations fourth you could be an entrepreneur running your own business setting up your own business and last and perhaps from my point of view extremely important you could be an academic teaching the way i am so <clears throat> there's a variety of careers and a variety of organizations to choose from it's a huge field let me come to if you want to make a career in management what is it we need to do usually an organization will offer you a job only after a masters degree or at least a good job after a masters degree so you need to have an mba and at the same time you have a choice you can either go for a integrated mba which could be a four year program or a five year program you know i am a professor at iit delhi i am a teacher so we are at the moment conducting a four year engineering btech program and then we ask our students to come for mba program in two years that is six years after school 
but we have recently proposed an integrated bba mba btech mba which will be 5 years so to begin with you need an undergraduate degree now the beauty of management is that you could enter the mba program from any stream so your undergraduate degree could be in any discipline it could be engineering it could be science it could be commerce it could be humanities it could be anything or it could be a bba a bachelor of business administration from but my submission to you is if you go for a bba program please go from a reputed college do not go from a unknown college if it's a choice of getting an engineering degree from iit or a bba from a lesser known college i would suggest go for an engineering degree and then go for an mba then of course there's the mba program master of business administration and the integrated bba programs we'll take up any questions on that but let me just complete my presentation for those of you who are considering coming back to india and doing your education in india or even if your parents are in oman or uh, kuwait or uh, saudi or whatever whatever you could very well come to india and clearly the best colleges for an mba in india are what we call abc indian institute of management i am a is probably one of the best in the world no issues about it i didn't get in there it's a different matter i probably didn't even apply there for whatever reason i was in b bangalore rank number 2 what does ranking mean i'll just come to that it really means what are the kind of jobs you get what the starting salary you get <coughs> we still call it c for calcutta although the city name is changed to kolkata but it is still called i am calcutta just like it is called iit madras or iit bombay and not iit chennai and then now coming in is the fourth one called lucknow and i could go on with this list but this list is available and then there are the iits which are offering a management program uh, amongst the iits uh, delhi ranks the highest today followed by bombay madras kharagpur in overall ranking iit delhi ranks number 7 usually and then there are lot of these are both government institutions iims and iits are government institutions theoretically one believes that government institutions should charge less but i am fees are pretty high not to worry and then we have the non government sector leading among them is isb hyderabad indian school of business probably followed by narsi monji institute of management studies bombay and now bangalore campus md i gurgaon fms delhi i am i delhi now these are some of the institutes you could look at some of them offer a undergraduate program in management some of them don't the data is available you can write to me but if you have an opportunity to get into some of the best colleges globally again the rankings are available but harvard mit and stanford the kind of it's a triology which keeps changing between themselves beautiful campuses nice places excellent jobs and one exception is here london school of business very good place excellent placement excellent faculty and then there is insead at france paris you could look at others but my submission to you would be target at least the top 20 somewhere in the top 20 selecting the college for the mba program what is it you should look for the first thing that i would suggest that you look for is what is the placement history of that institute placement means jobs what is the kind of job that you will get what are the starting salaries what are the companies that are coming there please look at the websites very carefully look at various analytics 
before you decide where to go for an MBA. Two, look at the faculty profile. Who are the teachers? What is their background? What do they do? Where are they studied? What is their writing? What is the research? Where did you do your PhD from? Third, look at the branding and ranking. There are various rankings available. The most popular is what we call the QS ranking. It's a global ranking. In India, we have also what is what we call the NIRF ranking, National Institute Ranking Framework by Government of India. Again, these are available, all available in Google. Alternately, I'll share with you my details and you can always write to me. Look at infrastructure. What are the kind of laboratories that they have? What are the kind of softwares that they have? What are the facilities that they have? It is my request and submission to all of you. If you do go in for a management degree, please go into a residential campus. Please stay in the hostels. I recollect my days. Some of the learning, some of our teaching happened in the classroom, but most, most of it happened in the hostel rooms your peer group, your friends. What are the specializations they offer? So depending on your interest, look at the specialization. For example, you will not find Babson School high in the rankings, but when it comes to entrepreneurship or family business, it is probably the best. You will not find not-for-profit marketing but if that is your interest, then Bentley is the best. You will not find an entrepreneurship program in the top universities, but Cranfield, which doesn't figure in, is probably the best. Now, I can give you that list for India also, but given the paucity of time and your interest and your competence to look at it, I have one more submission. Please ignore the fees. Don't even look at it. It does not matter whether you have to pay $5,000 or $50,000. Go for the best. You will recover it very fast. Two, the best school for finance, the best college, but we still call it school in business world, is Wharton. And I was talking to the dean there and I said, your fee is too high. And he had a very simple answer to that. He said, Professor Chaudhary, please ignore it. Once we offer you admission, we'll make sure you pay the fees. Loans are available to the good schools and you'll be able to repay your loans very quickly. I can give you stories and stories on that. But it's my request, go for the best. Do not bother about the fees. Fees will take care of itself. Okay. The admission criteria. For those of you who may be interested in it, your board examination marks will matter. Those of you who propose to or who may intend to join a BBA program immediately after your class 12, there are universities now who are offering admissions based on projected scores. Projected scores to be verified or sent by your school teachers and principals your statement of purpose. Why do you want to do what you want to do? Can you be clear about it? Your letters of reference, preferably from your teachers, who will give your letters of reference of what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, what are your limitations, what you're good at. Your co-curricular and extracurricular activities. What is it you do besides your academics? And extremely important, your SAT and TOEFL scores. The good schools will ask you for a SAT and TOEFL scores. You have to appear on them. SAT earlier used to be called Scholastic Achievement Test. Now it's just called SAT. And TOEFL, of course, it stands for Test of English as a Foreign Language. I don't think you, any one of you have an issue on that. That's easy work for all of you. SAT, there's specialized programs. More of it later. The MBA program, slightly different criteria. They would look at your academic record, your class 10, class 12, 
or if you're doing a IGCAC or an IB, then they would look at your uh, credits there. Statement of purpose. Once again, that's the same. Little reference, the same. This is the same. And here it changes to a GMAT score, usually a GMAT score, sometimes also a GRE score. GMAT stands for Graduate Management Aptitude Test and Graduate Research for Engineering. What are the career path? Have? Amongst all the disciplines that you can look at, categorically, management offers the highest paying jobs. The starting salaries average for, let's say, I am Ahmedabad in India would be over 20 lakhs per annum. If you do it from Harvard or MIT, from America, it would be about $150,000 a year. It is the fastest path to becoming a CEO of a company. You could be heading an organization at a very young age. And it is also the best route to becoming an engineer. Sorry, an entrepreneur. If you want to start your own business, then the path, the best route to take is a management program. What is good about this career besides the money, besides the role? It is versatile and flexible. I'm very grateful to children who have taken a biology and who want to become doctors because the world is going to need a lot of doctors. <coughs> At the same time, if you enter the field of medicine, it's very difficult to have something else. You are stuck with medicine. Management is very versatile and flexible. You can switch jobs, you can switch roles, you can do different things. And you have the option of either following a straight path or experience varied fields, very varied fields. So if I take my own career, I started from rubber technology. I worked in a consumer goods company. I worked in an information technology company. I got into teaching. I have been a consultant to fashion garments companies, to tobacco companies, to soft drinks, to computers, you name it. I worked for the, for the oil sector and so on. It is very challenging and exciting for those who like change. It works on innovative ideas, new things, newer and newer with me. And it combines science and art. A beautiful combination. So I'm going to stop here. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen. It's 9.57 by my watch. Uh, the time allowed to me, though I lost some of it in setting it up. <coughs> Was up to 10 o'clock. I'm three minutes before time. Now two minutes. And I'd be very glad to take on any questions. Uh, I assume Lisa will moderate that. So Lisa, any questions from you from the participants it was indeed a very inspiring and informative session for our <coughs> students and parents to give a thought for the building of their careers thank you sir for enlightening us so well on a vast topic we will now have a few questions from our audience for you sir so one student asks which is more demandable or helpful as a career? Engineering plus MBA or BBA plus MBA? I think, uh, Ronak, that's quite clear. Engineering plus MBA is more demanded. At the same time, my request to you would be, go for the brand. If you get a good engineering institution, once again, I don't know they're looking at India or you're looking at US or looking at Europe. If you get into one of the top 20 engineering institutes, great, go ahead. But if you, for some reason, miss that out, then it doesn't matter. You can go for a 
science program you can go for a commerce program same for bba if you get one of the top institutions go for a bba otherwise don't but if you are asking me a categorical question yes engineering plus mba is more demanded than a bba plus mba thank you sir so another student asks should you always be scoring above 90% to get into a really good business school well one my simple answer is yes for india because typically we do say that we look at a 90% plus score at the same time if you look at the us universities they do not take your board exam marks as seriously as we do in india they would go more with your sat scores they would go more with your letter of references they would go more with the statement of purpose so it can be offset but yes uh, on the assumption that you are all appearing for board exams might as well score well it's a good idea thank you sir so which of these combinations is preferred bcom plus mba or bba plus mba i would prefer a bba plus mba for a simple reason the bcom plus mba kind of pushes you to be in the finance sector but once again i repeat and i'm i'm again uh, lisa i'm not too sure whether i'm talking to students who are looking at india or who are looking at us or looking at europe but coming from let's say indian perspective you see typically what happens is fortunately and fortunately how are brilliant you are employers initially look at the brands that you carry with you where are you from so if you get into a commerce program at sri ram college of commerce or lady sri ram visa with a bba program from a lesser institute i would suggest go with commerce at the same time if you get a bba program at iim indore then go with the bba the same is true for us it's the university brand which matters have i responded appropriately thank you sir so we have our last question for today's session what are a few important factors that one must keep in mind when starting a career in business management according to you that's a difficult one and that's there is one thing which is common to all careers be that management be that engineering be that medicine be that whatever and that is are you going to enjoy it and can you put in do you have the grit do you have the stamina to put in your best but fundamentally it is a theoretical answer because we really don't know what works for us for each one of us <coughs> you need to have the best fit between your skills and market opportunities fortunately and fortunately our generation we had very easy life it was comfortable for us we could project the future today for you people it's difficult the world will not be the same 5 years from now you should have significantly changed in many many ways so you will probably not be able to predict we are not able to predict what are the careers of the future <coughs> <coughs> but by some chance if you can identify your skills and your passion and also the market opportunities that would be it 
but one criteria which will be very very important is what is the degree of flexibility you have how quickly can you shift and adapt to change it's going to be a change world it's thank really you dynamic. sir thank you so much lisa and with this uh, do we close the session now yes sir before we conclude this wonderful session i would like to take this opportunity to propose the vote of thanks we express our gratitude to his majesty sultan haitham bin tariq the benevolent and visionary ruler of oman for his kindness extended to the indian diaspora may the almighty bless his majesty and the nation with peace and prosperity we extend our hearty congratulations and good wishes to his majesty and the beautiful people of oman on the 50th national day we express our sincere thanks to our honorable guest speaker professor dr harish choudhury from iit delhi university for sparing his valuable time to share his expertise with us thank you sir a heartfelt you. thanks to dr baby sam samuel chairman board of directors of indian schools oman and members on the board of directors mr ajay kumar j president indian school mascot management committee our respected principal dr rajiv kumar chauhan for tirelessly working with his team for the success of today's program presidents and members of all indian school management committees in the south net of oman respected principals vice principals assistant vice principals supervisors coordinators heads of departments and teachers for wholeheartedly supporting such an event special word of thanks to the ism team for alane 2020 our sincere thanks to the students and parents whose presence has made this event a great success signing off is lisa pinto of class 11d indian school mascot thank you one and all wishing you all success in your future endeavors and stay safe thank you all god bless you i have your permission to sign off now